Hello and welcome to Retro Game Connect. I'm Dan Mastriani. I'm Ian Butterfield. And today we're playing one of the most metal shooters ever. Metal. Yes. Lords of Thunder. Can, can you edit in like a, a really intense guitar solo right there? I don't know. I'll see what I can find in the public domain. <laughs> yeah. That's not in the just throw, Van just, Halen is not in the Just throw domain. eruption right in there. All right, so Lords of Thunder, side-scrolling shooter uh, from Hudson and Red Company. Of course, they also teamed up on things like Bonk. You like Bonk? Bonk. Yes, your old friend Bonk. We need to play Bonk again. There are other Bonk games, but I don't want to go back to the well too soon. We gotta, we have to, we have to spread it out. Not too much. We don't, um, really I, I, wanna, I'm, not, I'm gonna stop this. We don't want to keep bonking them on the yeah. end of the same game. There you go. That sounds, that sounds a bit better than where I was going. Uh, uh, it is kind of a follow-up to an earlier game called Gate of Thunder, but they're not very similar, uh, aside from being from the same developers, because Gate of Thunder is more traditional space shooter. But Lords of Thunder, you're like a guy with magic armor. Fighting so demons and dragons so, and all so, kinds of stuff. So me in regular life. Exactly. You know, it's just, yeah, it's the kind of thing you do every day. Exactly. Yeah. What do you think I do between shoots? Jeez. Oh, obviously. Uh, I was uh, known as Winds of Thunder in Japan. Uh, an interesting thing. Winds of Thunder? Yes. Winds. Winds. <sighs> yes, exactly. Boom. Yeah, I know. It's kind of weird. Uh, in the cover art that we don't actually have because we're playing this on Virtual Console. Insert cover art here in After Effects. Yeah. I... Probably not, but <laughs> uh, the cover art was actually done by Masamune Shiro, uh, the creator of Ghost in the Shell, which is Those maybe big enough that you've actually are heard familiar. of it. Yes, I know you don't watch anime, but perhaps you've heard of Ghost in the Shell. It, the the words are familiar, yeah, and seem to line up with them being an anime. Mm -hmm. It's it's a fairly major franchise, but he created. I, I also would think that's like a ghost evolutionary chain of Ammonite. I see where you're going with that. Ghost in a shell. No, no, I got it. I got it. Uh, the music. All hail Lord Helix. Mm -hmm. uh, it was ported. A couple other things. It was ported to Sega CD. Oh. It was the Sega CD version. Sega. Well. Yes, I do have the Sega CD, but I don't have the Sega CD version. Though the Sega CD version, slightly worse from what I've seen. Not really like. If you only have Sega CD, like you're. You'd be fine, but if you had both, you'd probably want to go with the tur Turbo Graphic CD version. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't done a comparison myself on uh, that. Uh, music by Tease Music. Uh, they've been around for a while. They're basically you know, like a big collective com of composers. They do contract work. Uh, they actually, this is relevant to us, is they did the remixes of the music in Final Fight for Final Fight CD. Oh, yes, which we played in our we, second episode. We played that. Yes. Which was the one we played with the car? That was Final Fight CD where you beat up the car. Oh, it was? Okay. Yes, yes. You remember correctly. I, just, I didn't remember the game, the name. Yes, it's Final Fight, which had like several That was circles. our second episode? That was our second oh my episode. my gosh. Yeah, yeah. The car. Yeah, yeah, we beat up a car. And then there's with the, the other time you... you, you <laughs> No, no, no. You're thinking of Fighters Mega Mix where you played as a car. Yeah, no, that's what I was talking about. No, no, no. Where you were... Final Fight is the one where there's a bonus stage where... We where you beat up the beat car. Beat up the car. Okay. Yes. yes. That was our second episode. Okay. Yeah. Sega CD game. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now you got it? I got it. No, okay. Got this. <laughs> yeah. I like the fighting as a car, though. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, yeah, Tease Music is still around. They're still you know, doing contract work for game publishers. Uh, the only other thing I will mention is they promote this pretty heavily. Uh, they kind of try to make it a marquee title, something to draw people in. That's uh, They decided, I guess, that was just good and looking and sounding enough to kind of get people into TurboGrafx-16. So they put a lot of marketing behind it. They came out with a promotional VHS. Those words... Together, <laughs> just sound like 
the worst plan ever. Something you saw, I mean, like in the 90s, possibly even in the 80s, you'd get, you know, in the 90s, but a couple of video game companies would send out VHS tapes with footage of the, an upcoming or perhaps multiple upcoming games and try to get you to buy them. This one is really kind of awkward. It's just buy, strange. You buy the preview that you can't play. No, no, they they, they were giving them away. They're promotional. I was gonna say promotional items. They're promotional I was gonna items. Say. Uh, there was actually an ad, and they would give you a uh, there's a little slip you could cut out at the bottom, which a bunch of people probably wouldn't want to cut out because there's probably like an article on the other side, <laughs> they'd be cutting the bottom off of. But I you send you, you send in the order form, they would send you a free promotional video for and X-ray design. glasses. Not in, this, not in this particular case, but <laughs> it's something that, it, I mean, I myself have like a couple of promotional tapes from Nintendo because I had a Nintendo Power subscription in the 90s and I, when I remember off the top of my head, they sent me a video promoting Donkey Kong Country. And now we have YouTube. Yeah, you can find these things on YouTube. They are strange. Even after the time I was watching this, I'm like, what, what is, what? <laughs> Pretty sure that's what most people think when they're watching us and I just start doing things. It's just like, what? What is he doing? I know that's what I'm thinking when I'm, I'm sitting next to you. I'm like, Ian, what, what are you... And then, Ian, you're, and then you're editing it and you're just Ian, constantly exposed. focus on the video game. Focus on the video game. <laughs> I love video games, but I can't focus. So yeah, strange promotional video. It's kind of awkward. Uh, probably because the people running Turbo... Uh, at the time, didn't have a huge budget. It wasn't a huge success in the U.S. No one likes someone with no. a small budget. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, they tried to promote it pretty heavily. Uh, VHS tape. It's weird. I would imagine. Yeah. It's... I still remember all the sounds of loading in a VHS tape. Oh, yeah. But something was kind of bizarre about because I, I looked it up while I was doing the research and I watched the video. And some of the shots are like really pixelated. And there's kind of like some time code cut off. So I'm wondering if they had like some video that they tried to zoom in on for some reason. But with like 90s video editing technology, it didn't come out too well. And I'm sitting there like, and there's this scene with somebody like doing a jump in a car, like they're probably in, like in San Francisco or something, someone goes up the hill and kind of hits, hits, hits the bump in the road and you, know, you kind of see some sparks where their undercarriage hits the road and I'm like, what, what does this have to do? So it's like most marketing today. <laughs> yeah. When you're like watching an ad for like um, some kind of pill, it's like, what does this all have to do with taking pills? I just, it's baffling. At least some companies like embrace them just not caring about what the commercials yeah, are. Yeah, they're about. like intentionally weird to be memorable and like, here like old like, spice. What was what was your plan? <laughs> what were you thinking? Why did you think this would make people want to buy Lords of Thunder for your C D add on that costs more than the video game system? I don't know. Um, I, I, I think we're kind of hitting the pulse here of why Turbo Graphics, while being a pretty decent game system, the didn't world sell of, very well. The world is mar of marketing is dark and full of terrors. Yeah, uh, the people who run the company in Japan were kind of like, oh yeah, you know, you just buy like three markets and uh, you're covered, right? And you're like, well, um, in a country the size of California, yes. In a country that contains California and where it isn't the biggest state. No. <laughs> yeah. America's kind of large. Yeah. Which is also probably why we have problems getting Amiibo. But, uh, mm. And why magazines are still big in like Japan and England. And here it's like we, we, we have to ship them from here to... And all this... <laughs> we can't print that many. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, that's that's the tragedy of a lot of failures of Japanese products in the U.S. is the Japanese company is in charge, and they're like, well, this works in Japan, so we're just going to do it in America. 
And the people in America be like, but America is really different than Japan. And then and this yeah, stuff isn't going to work. People in America and are people sitting in Japan there. are you like, you're trying to tell me how to make my business work. How dare you? And you're people, fired. The people in America are sitting there and they're in their reclining chairs with their with their light beers and their shotguns and their Merca hats and they're like, we don't want your foreign games. I don't know, man. It's I think a, we should start playing. It's game. election season start, in this start, country, start so it's now. weird. Start, we're gonna we're gonna do that. Woo! Do that. Oh, hey, this is a Yu-Gi-Oh game. Yep, Mario. Well, it's Lords of Thunder, and Yu-Gi-Oh is King of Games. So. Yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh. Well, as you can see, we're already, we're already music's kind of metal. As you guys can see, but our TV's turned really down so we don't get yeah, audio we can't, feedback. Yeah, we can't hear it too well, but... So you got a nice little opening cutscene since, you know, you have the space on the CD. Of course, you got your red book audio, which basically means that you're playing music straight off the CD just like it was an audio CD. Actually, with red book audio games, uh, you could actually pop them in your CD player and listen to the game soundtrack. Nice. So you have to be careful because the first track is data and you could mess up your speakers with it. Oh. It just sound like a modem? Uh, no, it's, but it's, May even be worse, actually, but it's again you can blow out your speakers. I'm I'm curious now. At least I think it was Red Book Audio. This may this may just uh, have higher quality like audio samples and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I had an actual CD. Obviously, we could check, but I don't. We're playing this on virtual console because I never owned a Turbo Graphics. Con. So I think these are the villains. Welcome that you have to, to fight. a 1990s Americanized anime. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, there are there was actually, I believe, an intro, like uh, narration, in the Japanese version, which they unfortunately uh, took out of the U.S. version. In a world where people control thunder and Obelisk the Tormentor destroys all living things. It does look like him. It really did. I wonder if Kazuki Takahashi uh, played this game when he was younger. In Japan, where the system was actually popular. That's pretty fun. I mean, limited animation, but you know, considering uh, the horrible, grainy full motion video you tended to get on CD games, I think using some sprite animation instead. Well, probably works out better. excuse me, princess. You know, it occurs to me that I've never actually defined sprites for people who may not know what they are. Uh, basically, you know, your your character graphics. Uh, that is a sprite. Like, you know, so our, the character we're going to be moving around the game is a sprite. Um, we can go ahead, and, go ahead and look at the configuration quick. Just so I know what I'm doing. Uh, I won't be upset with you if you turn on difficulty, but I think we're already on the lowest difficulty. Okay, so, you know, obviously you've got... Uh, so, like Mega Man, uh, you can choose what stage you start with. Well... Helado, I'm pretty sure, is Spanish for ice cream, so... That sounds good. You also get to choose your armor. Uh, from what I was reading, the water so, armor is the best. So, but wait, if I'm the Avatar, can I use all of them? It's literally all of the same elements. Well, oh, come on, they're pretty traditional elements. What doesn't use wind, water, well, earth, and fire? Well, you know, there's also, like, heart. Right. If you're trying to summon Captain Planet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you've got a little shop, we can buy some stuff. Uh, I mean, you have actually, unlike some other uh, shooting games, you don't die in one hit in this, you actually have life. So I don't know if you... Yeah, fire shield, why not? And I don't know if you... Normal life, sounds good. So uh, again, in the Japanese version and in the Sega CD version, uh, she has a voice. So you have a bomb on one button, and you so there's your regular shot. The other shot is a bomb to kill everything on the screen. Or at least it has a big, like, white fire. So. so, interesting thing about this game. Uh, speaking of sprites... Uh, I can you'll... really go for one right now. <laughs> Keep talking about sprite. I know. You'll notice in the background you have a technique called parallax scrolling. 
Oh, this is something else you see. Isn't that the bad guy from Green Lantern? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, he is a cold parallax. Or is uh, that could, just like the power a up you just picked up gave you more powerful. Oh, you lost already. But if you pick up power, it'll uh, give you more powerful shots. So you lose them when you get hit. Apparently, I've been hit a lot. Yeah. Well, fortunately, you have a life bar. I mean, that's good. Yeah. You definitely want to make sure you pick up the power up. Uh, yeah, as you can see, when you get close to it. Oh. No. I exploded. Yeah, that was awkward. Game over. It's okay. We can go again. I was going to say, it's probably no point in using the continue since we haven't actually beaten anything. Let's try Earth. Yeah, try, try some of the other ones. I, again, I heard that the uh, the water was the most powerful, but, you know. Just for ha-ha's. I mean, you might want to, if you have the money, buy extra continues. Yeah, that's 1,500. Oh, it's 1,500. Okay. Yeah, this is the one that has like a bomb. Do 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 Kind of enemies, lots, lots of stuff on screen. You haven't, isn't quite uh, up to the standards of like a bullet hell game, which is something that wouldn't come around until like late 90s, where basically the screen is just full of projectiles, and you have really like a very tiny hitbox, and you have to weave through the little faces in there. Yeah, so I, I'm thinking the water. Water was better. We're gonna try and fire. It's not good. Let's take a look at all. Uh, I think Elixir, actually. Can you afford an Elixir yet? Ah, oh, no, that's really expensive. Uh, the Elixir uh, will refill your health when you die. I've got a shield. This isn't too bad. So obviously this is, even on the lowest difficulty, this is not an easy game. No. It is moist defiantly not. But what I was trying to say earlier, you can see uh, the background. Uh, basically, they have objects that are supposed to be further away from you, like moving a little bit slower. Uh, kind of creates the, you know, the, the, the illusion of depth, right? Uh, it's a technique called parallax scrolling. Like someone who says they're not like everybody else. Exactly. But it's something that even goes back to traditional cell animation, where, you know, you would, with cells, you would literally have, like, layers of the, the clear acetate that they would draw it on and you know things were further away would be on the bottom layer and you barely move them as you move the screen and stuff that's closer would move, would move more quickly. I always thought the animation of Cell was interesting. Mm. Made a Dragon Ball Z yeah, reference. No, no, I caught it. Well you could even say it was perfect. But, uh, yes! I unleashed a dragon of doom. Good. I like it. But you know, the, the technique, especially as, as video game I'm systems. I'm about to die. I'm about, oh, there Video game systems got more powerful. You would you'd see the variable more scrolling power. in the background to try to, you know, like add depth to the background, make it look like there was more going on. But the thing about the TurboGrafx 16 was it couldn't actually handle multiple layers of background. Really? So what they actually had to do, must have had to do here is actually use sprites to create the image of having the scrolling background. I don't know. So basically they did this by hand. Like on a more powerful system, they could have like multiple background layers. You would have, you know, you would do it just like a traditional cell animation where you would have these just, you know, background Hey, if you layers. land on the ground, you walk. That's neat. That's uh, something you also do in Fantasy Zone. And if you get close to them, you smash them. Yes. I mentioned that earlier. And if you get hit a lot, you die. Mm. But that is a little risky because... They will deal you with can't, you, Yeah, you can't shoot also while you're, you're swinging your sword. Though it is more powerful than your shot. 
do 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 But yeah, so basically, one thing so that Joe Rush was good at was throwing around lots of sprites of various sizes. So they basically just did it manually, you know? Created, yeah. created that effect. Gonna save up our coins this time. There you go. Gonna also stop using my bomb as soon as the level loads. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, this one kind of fills the screen. This is intense. It fills the screen pretty well. I think that is uh, so fast. Pretty, pretty good way to describe it. Did it? 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 Yeah, just, just We're just gonna it. save up all my monies. I think that's good. Yeah! See how far you I think it's probably why they wanted to put so much promotion behind this because, again, it, it demonstrates a lot of its uh, best capabilities. You know, the way they were meant to use the system of sprite pushing to, like, create a parallax scrolling. Even basically cheat their way into parallax scrolling. Uh, the fact there are lots of like really large enemies. Which uh, basically demonstrated the system's ability to create sprites of like really large How size. long do you think I'm gonna last in one health? Oh uh, no, you're doing pretty good. You're doing pretty good. I'm about to die right now. Oh, 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 there we go. Uh, you were doing good. You shouldn't have been so pessimistic. Of course, you know, the game doesn't really seem to have a lot of problems with uh, flickering or slowdown, so. Oh, yeah. And so what you're saying is it's better than Assassin's Creed Unity. <laughs> Quite possibly. Assassin's Creed, I love you, but Unity, what the hell. I can't remark on it because uh, I didn't have the money. So it, I, who am I kidding? I wouldn't bother. Anyway. It came with my system. There you go. I I can't I can't even finish it. It's just so slow. It lags so much. That's a shame. Yeah. Oh, I have two health at the. Oh, uh, what the? I had two health. I no, no. I mean, he did two damage. Jerk. Yeah. No! Not, 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 not quite enough. That's disappointing. I mean, I guess you can jump up to higher levels. There you go. See what you can do. So, again, Real. the strategy here is <laughs> I, obviously so oh, it's ooh. Yeah, so. I uh, have the power! So, with the powered up weapon, you might be able to. Uh, clear the screen up enough that you don't know. Oh, so much for that idea. I do have more bombs though. Uh, yeah, so I think the bombs are yeah, there's three circles under your life bar, right? Uh, I bought more. So yeah. Alright. Uh, another actually this reminds me of another change with the uh, Sega C D version. Is uh, when you got hit in that game instead of just going like Hoo! I'm oh, about to die already. And continuing to move, you would. Uh, there we go. Oh, there you go. You would actually like flinch and be stuck in place. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, so that'd be that'd be kind of awkward. Yeah. That was a very quick game if you're really bad at it. Can I? I just. I want to do one run. I'm gonna try it out. See if I can uh, do any better. Roll one. Uh, try a different stick. Alright, so obviously the one in the middle is the one you go to last. 
We did the bottom left and the bottom one already. Yeah, so, um, I'll do Spanish Bosque. Bosque? Like, the Trandoshan bounty hunter? Uh, from sure Star Wars? So the two button was shoot, right? Uh, no. Nope. No, that, that was, was bomb. bomb. Alright. Well, I do like, I'm seeing now that you, you really have. really bombed uh, it. Yeah. You have auto fire. I like that. I always like that in shooting games. Uh, having grown up playing Contra, where you did not have auto fire and just kind of had to mash the button as fast as you could. I grew up with Spyro. Yeah, there you go. Well, that's not really a shooting game. So. I mean, you shoot flames. Yeah, I guess. I mean, but you don't really like mash it as fast as you can, do you? Um, I usually mash potatoes. Okay. That's tasty. It is. Had that last night for dinner, actually. Oh, that's good. Made with like chicken and vegetables. Yeah. Not just mashed potatoes. Right, right. That would be kind of unhealthy. I mean, depends on what you put in it. Well, I just, you know, you want some variety in your diet. Right? I, I like garlic. Can you put some garlic in there? Bam. Yeah. Garlic's good. Oh, it's starting to rain. I like that. What? It's no, in the game. In the game. I know. I'm joking. Fine. Oh. oh. I was doing so well. You died when the bottom crab showed up. Yeah. This the bottom crab. Oh. See that? Is this is a countdown? The candles are going out. Yeah. I see. Very metal soundtrack. You saw. I think that was pretty good. You saw three stages. Oh, so there is actually a countdown. That's it. That's fun. Seems weird. Arcade stuff coming over to console. But this wasn't gets the card game. This was, I know. This well, was just awesome. uh, just yeah. like mechanics like oh, that yeah. coming over to console is always weird. So what did we learn today? Um, was the thunder totally metal? It's totally metal, and I yeah. totally suck at it. Mm. That takes practice. It's, it's not a simple game. Uh, if it makes you feel any better, you've you've uh, seen how far I got. Yeah. What was that? I mean, I bought this game and was like, yeah, this game is cool. And like, oh, I, I can't beat any of these stages. <laughs> it's it's going to definitely take some practice. It's uh, very reflex skill based. Mm. Uh, I do prefer these types of shooters where you just kind of more reflex to the ones where you have to be like, okay, if you don't know exactly what's happening next, you're going to lose. True. I like more side-scrolling shooters like Metal Slug, though. Yeah, Metal Slug is fine. We'll definitely have to... Metal slug. We'll definitely have to play some Middle Slug at some point. I have to figure out what the best vector for mm -hmm. that is because I've got a few different ways. Who made that? Uh, that was actually published by SNK. Uh, well, we'll talk about that when we're playing Middle Slug. Uh. Yeah, that is off the topic. I can, I can tell you lots of stuff about Middle Slug, but we'll tell you that when we're actually playing a Middle Slug game, which we almost certainly will at some point in the future, please look forward to it. But right now, we should get back to Lords of Thunder. Uh, definitely, the soundtrack's a lot of fun. Uh, oh yeah, it was. It sounded really cool. Good die audio. a lot. Yeah, that's kind of part for the course. Nifty creatures. Hmm. Yeah, you think I about, could no. kill all of you. With more traditional shooters, you'd be like one hit and you're dead, and then you have to start back from a checkpoint. Yeah, same with traditional platformers too. Yeah, so. Unless you get the Uka Uka mask, mm. and then you level it up, and then you, and then you get invincible invincibility for a while. Alrighty, Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> My main experience with that was with the PlayStation ads, where I was like, "This is dumb. I don't like these. I don't like this guy. This is trying to get me to buy a PlayStation." I like Crash. Well, like I said, I. We've been over this several times. I've never really played the games. PS1 was my first console. So. It wasn't my first console, so I'm like, why do I want to play this Crash Bandicoot game when I can play Final Fantasy VII? But I was also like six when I got it. Right, you so were the right... platforming's fun. Here's what I'm saying. You were at an age where you wanted to play games like that because they were targeted at you, and I was at an age where like, I don't want to play these games anymore. I'm going to play these grown-up adult games. And now I'm at an age where worrying about playing grown-up adult games is silly. I should just play stuff that's fun. I play a lot of Pokemon. Yeah. 
You know, I'm old I enough to a, realize that it's silly to worry about how adult the game is and I, worry about I, whether or not you like it. I have a physical Pokemon trainer card with my competitive team on it. And I have all the badges, too, like as pins. It's awesome. There you go. There's got to be a lot of badges by now. Um, six regions, eight badges per, so 48, plus the Orange Islands. I have the Orange Islands ones, too. Wait, were those like were those was actually like, in the game or were those? No, it's anime. Yeah, I was, I was, I was my thinking, friend gave it all to me for my. I birthday. wasn't sure because I'm not really. I I stopped watching Pokemon. Oh, so did I. I. That, so I. But yeah. still, yeah. Hi, so Lords, Lords of, of Thunder. Thunder. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you know we didn't get to any of the bosses, which were like I'm I'm sure really huge enemies. Yeah. But it did a good job showing off the uh, the graphical power of the system where yeah. you can push lots of sprites on screen. I mean, think about the Turbo Graphics 16. It was actually ran on the same processor as the NES. Hmm. Just a much faster version. You know, they just one with a much higher clock speed. Um, so the thing that I was seeing looking at it is it's actually it's they considered a very simple system to program for. They essentially overclocked an NES? They didn't necessarily overclock it. They just had a newer version of the processor. It's the same processor, so just, you know, naturally running in a... Like, just how today you can buy, without even overclocking, you can buy, you know, an Intel processor. That this one runs at this clock speed, and this one in the same family runs at a different clock speed. And you're, it's not because you're overclocking, it's just because that's what it's designed to run at. This is getting too complicated for me. Anyhow... I'm a console gamer, man. More powerful uh, version of the NES processor. Uh, it basically had two, so two graphics processors. If you... If you strike down the NES, it'll become the Turbo Graphics, and it will become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Well, that's funny because that's what they were trying to do. You know, they they took the their well well known processor. And people already knew how to prog- program. Got the you know latest model with a faster clock speed. Uh, they had two graphics chips, but you know they were one was designed to handle certain things, and the other one designed to handle other things. So it wasn't a case of like, well, how do I get these to work together? It's like, no, this one will do this. This one will do that. Don't worry about it. So it pretty, actually ended up being pretty straightforward to program for, but because of this design, you could have like huge sprites, whereas you know, the NES had these limits on the size of the sprites. You had to be, only be so big. They had to do a lot of tricks to have like big enemies. But then if you put mushrooms in it, it'll grow bigger. Exactly. It was like, well, Mario's, uh, you can't get much bigger than the Super Mario sprite on an NES. You know, at times, you, and you play an NES game, you find some huge screen-filling enemy. It's actually like a background layer. Hmm. You'll, you'll notice that these huge enemies on NES games don't seem to move very much. You yeah. know, they're kind of like big static enemies, and that's because... Well, NES could do a sprite that big. Just had to make it kind of like a background image and maybe just put some sprites on it to make it move a little. Huh. It's like nifty. It's like being standing in front of a matte painting because you you can't you can't actually shoot in a mountain range. Or you, you know? can't actually shoot a hanger with the Millennium Falcon in it. Yeah, so you get a you get a big old mat get a matte painting and yeah. kinda of fake it. Yeah. And then you just cut before uh, Billy D. Williams walks into the painting. There you go. Uh, I just noticed that watching Return of the Jedi. I was like, man, that is a painting? <laughs> yeah. They're yeah, so, standing you know, in front of a board. They had to fight it the best they could. Oh, yeah. But the TurboGrafx-16, with its, with its 16-bit graphics processors, could have huge sprites. Huge. Yeah, so you actually had these big, gigantic enemies that would move around the screen because they were... Actual sprites the the hard worker manipulate. They were pissed. They might be. So this is a good game. Fast shows off the graphics processing the hardware. I can see why they got behind it. Yeah. Uh, even if their their ad campaign was strange. Kind of, yeah, not the best. Convoluted. Yeah. Lots Still, it was it's a pretty good game. It's a shame that the system was so overlooked in the U.S. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. Lots of people remembered it finally in Japan, where the system actually sold because it actually beat the Genesis to market. Uh, Turbo Graphics had lots of problems. Phil Collins was really mad about that. Yeah, yeah. 
Pirum, pirum, pirum. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, there. Yeah, he predicted it coming out because he could feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh, Lord. Sub thunder. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I always like fast paced shooters. Uh, you know, I, I've i always, like, for instance, at the time, like, Gradius and R-Type were rivals, and I always liked Gradius better because it was less memorize the exact pattern of the stage and more, you better be able to dodge. And this is, you know, more toward the hectic, you better be able to dodge school and not the, yeah. uh, it's not too fast, but if you don't know the exact proper way to beat the stage, you're going to die. Yeah. I like being able to not have to do that one way to beat the stage, like being able to figure it out and just do your own path. Yeah. I mean, pattern recognition is going to be part of any classic game. Oh, absolutely. They could only make them so complicated. But I don't want that pattern to be like an ironclad. This is the steps you have to take. It's like, okay, I'm just I recognize way... what's happening and I can react to it. I'm way too used to open world games at this point. Hmm. I'm yawning. <laughs> I'm to, like, I've been playing Borderlands and Saints Row for months now because I, I, I can't afford more games right now. I might get the rare replay, though. I'm yeah. not sure. Got to beat Saints Row first. Mm. Four. Saints Row four. And get out of hell. I beat Saints Row four. Anyway. Yeah, I... I, I'm even more broke. I last Saints Row I played was Saints Row Three. I, I still don't have four. <laughs> I, I wanted it and I got it. Yeah. I wanted it and I didn't have money. Yeah, that, that's problematic. Yeah. See, if you people watch more episodes, we'll get watch money to be able to play games. Please watch the show. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then express your want to see behind the cartridge. Maybe we'll throw in some previews. Yeah, I, I know you like that. I'm, I, I'm almost sure somebody's already done that. Well, well we're calling it that for now. I'm, I'm just saying. I, I'm, I'm afraid you're gonna call it that, and somebody's gonna be like, "That's our show." I'm like, uh, it's, it's, the, it's the running it's the, title. I didn't sign off on it. It's the running title for it. Okay. I don't know. I just feel like it's so obvious. Someone must have thought of it before we did. Well, yeah, but you'd think that, but they still haven't made an open world. MMORPG Pokemon game for a console, so... Well, again, but... <laughs> it's obvious, but they haven't done it. But clearly, <laughs> they know about it because everybody else has thought about it, so that's probably a case of, like, yeah, we don't want to do that. Hey, I mean, they're doing Pokemon Go. They are. So there's that. There's nothing to do with Lords of Thunder. Let's... I don't uh, know, good effects. Uh, Pikachu baggers, used yeah. Thunder, it was super effective. There we go. Yeah. There you go, rocking soundtrack. Uh, even if I have trouble with it, I think it's a pretty fun shooting game. Oh yeah, it was fun, just difficult. Yep, just something you gotta sit down and learn the ins and outs and how. You need patience. Yeah, need to. Need you to need to be it. a doctor to do this because you need patience. It's okay. a pun, you say. Yeah, no, I, I see that, or perhaps I should say I heard it. Okay. Well, we're clearly getting uh, entirely too wacky to discuss this intelligently. So I think the best thing Well, there's thing not to a do... whole lot to discuss intelligently about it. No, it's, it's pretty straightforward. What you see is what you get. Um, it is available now on Virtual Console, of course, if you have the Wii U. And VHS and ca Home Cassette. Yes. And Betamax. No, not Beta. Beta was yes. already dead. Beta was dead. Oh, it's available for Betamax. I was there in the 90s. You can buy Beta. It's available. Betamax. Maybe if somebody dubbed their VHS <laughs> tape onto a Betamax. And Laserdisc. Oh. Funny bit of trivia. There oh, was here we go. Actually, a Panasonic Laserdisc player that actually had uh, like swappable modules that would let it play video games. Uh, there was one for Genesis and there was one for TurboGrafx-16. Huh. And there were actually like a handful of TurboGrafx-16 that would work in conjunction with a Laserdisc to play a game. Nifty. Yeah. That's crazy, right? I'm the more you know. Yep. Super expensive, though, even at the time. Good luck ever buying one. I'm certainly not going to. No matter how many people watch the show, I'm not buying one of those. 
I mean, unless you want to send us one. I, I, I guess. I feel kind of guilty about accepting that, but... I won't. <laughs> I mean, if enough people watch the show, I might, might like do something ridiculous, like buying a Neo Geo. <laughs> could always we could always go simple and just buy silly hats. Yeah. People think we're gonna improve the show. <laughs> I mean, I've got. I mean, a I'm sure they don't want to obscure handle. seeing my hair. So. Maybe you got the luxurious long hair, young. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. So I feel. Yeah. So. Panasonic Laser Active, was that what it was called? I don't remember. That's kind of neat, though. Off topic, but you know, when else are we going to talk about TurboGrafx-16 stuff, but when we're playing TurboGrafx-16 games. Woo! Through emulation, officially, because I can't afford a TurboGrafx. They're, they're kind of pricey. Isn't everything. Yeah, maybe someday, if enough people watch the show, I'll import like a, the Japanese system, because they're a lot easier to find, because they actually sold. <laughs> and we will play some actual Turbo Graphics, which would be neat. It and would I would love to show that to you, and I would like to own one. Wicked neato. Yes. Yeah, you know, th th these are pie-in-the-sky things when the show gets super popular. I'll buy me you know, some version of the Turbo Graphics and the Neo Geo. And I'll probably buy another shirt. I only have so many mm. for there you go. looking all right. Well, I'm, I'm dreaming big. We're, we're talking like, like long-term... Big goals, yeah. big goals, big goals. Not shirts are like 15 bucks, man. <laughs> that, you know, short term. <laughs> you know, YouTube only pays out and when you make at least $100. Your cut would be around 33 You could buy a shirt. I could. With our minimum payment from YouTube. That's true. This is not do a you, pie in the sky you, goal. Do you, but do you know how long it takes me to find a shirt? It took me like 20 minutes just to find the right size. I'm I'm sorry. You have such difficulty <laughs> with shirt shopping. <laughs> so Lords of Thunder. It's it, it was fun. You have the patience for the game. I liked it. I'm glad I bought it. I'm glad my I was finally able to get the weave repaired so I could play it again. But as it was thing. before the most recent time that we got completely sidetracked, I was saying that, hey, if you have a Wii U, you can switch into Wii mode. You can still buy this on the virtual console, even if you don't have the original Wii. You can switch it to Wii 1 mode? It has a Wii mode for backward compatibility. And That's so interesting. Yes, and if you use that, you can connect to the original Wii's uh, online shop and to buy you know, WiiWare games or virtual console games that haven't made their way to the Wii U Virtual Console. Nifty. Yes. I don't own a Wii anymore, so I got nothing. Yeah, I'd I like got, to own a Wii U, but I, got my I think we've already covered that in Broke. Yes. Send us money. <laughs> Send us your money. Oh, this is... I don't want people to think we're just in this for the money. We, we like doing the show. <laughs> in all seriousness, we'll, we'll keep doing the show as long as we can, but... Um, but if you send us money, we'll be able to keep doing the show. Yeah, even because longer. we can actually make money off the show, and we don't have to prioritize other things that like making make pizza us money. and selling fish. Yeah, so. I, I do not have glamorous day and night jobs. No, no, I don't have day and night but, jobs. So please, but but <laughs> but if you watch the show, we we'll spend more time. We'll upgrade the production value too. Oh, that would that would be super. Yeah, I would like us yeah. to get our own camera. We we could get a different background than isn't different that Chicago? It is Chicago. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, we we could. The joke I would been I've been preparing for someone noticing that it's Chicago is that is the closest we will ever get to playing one of the Blues Brothers games. Ha <laughs> It's as close as I am willing to go to those horrible horrible thirds. Blues Brothers, great movie. Video game is based on Blues Brothers. Oh, no, no. No. Bad. Yeah. Watch the show. We'll make it better. With, yes. With the money. Yes. Money is good. We live in a capitalist society. Yes. Maybe if it's the Soviet Russia, we could be like sponsored by the state or something. But then everything would be really dour. They probably wouldn't let us make jokes. No. No. We'd have to be very serious, and we'd have to only say good things about games that were made in Russia. Yeah. 
We, you know, so we'd be talking about how great Tetris is. And then the next episode would be all about how great Tetris is. Yeah. And then the next one would be all about how great Tetris is. But the episode after that would be all about how great Tetris is. Exactly. <laughs> we sure need to know. end this episode. <laughs> we do. I made that joke, but I, I just, not too long ago, I, well, long ago by the time people watch this. Long, I re- long time ago. I retweeted an, uh, we, wow, retweeted an article about Soviet arcade games. Really? Yes. So go ahead and go back in our Twitter feed and find that if you didn't see it when I sent it out, because it was actually pretty interesting. And if you don't read it, Soviet. <laughs> Anyhow, speaking I had to, of Twitter. I had to put in my two cents. I hate to Gorbachev you off. <laughs> no, that didn't work. Hey, you know what? You know what? No, that's right. Marks my words. I think you're stalling when we should be ending the episode. <laughs> I think we're rushing to the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> this, oh. this is what the, the now being called until we get a better name behind the cartridge is. is. This is the preview. I think this is what happens when you watch a show produced by Insomniacs. <laughs> Pretty much. I've been Dan Mastretti. You can catch me on Twitter at, at NewTypeCola. I'm Ian Butterfield. You can find me at Twitter at Ian G. Butterfield. You totally have to edit that in now. Just so you know. What, what am I? You can get right here, my Twitter what handle. Just gonna. Yes. No, I put it at the beginning of every episode. You've, you've been watching the show, right? Yes, but no, like right there you have to put it. Right there, like right there as I'm talking about it. I don't have to do anything. It. I'm editing so, the show. So, if you want to do so, it so bad, So if you, you want to see show. more episodes, like, subscribe, send us envelopes full of money. <laughs> we'll have to set up a P.O. box for that. Just in case. I, after all this, I'm afraid someone's going to send us something besides money. <laughs> Join us next time on Retro Game Connect. <laughs>